Hello everybody! There is an exciting bit of news. Smart PLS has just released version 4.0.9.3 and in this one they have covariance based SEM features. This is awesome and crazy! This is setting up Smart PLS to be the one software to rule them all. Well, at least in terms of SEM and user-friendly interface. So, in this video, I'm going to show you how to start your first CB SEM project. You can see right here, there's a CB SEM button. First, I'll create a new project, just like we would normally. CB SEM, name it whatever you want. And in here, I'm going to create a model. And I'm going to select the CB SEM option. Name it whatever I want. Fun with CB. Save. And now we have a CBSEM canvas here. We need some data, obviously, so let's go back. Let's grab some data. I'm going to use SAV files. I'll just use this one right here. For now, I'm going to uncheck this and just hit import, except all the defaults. We've gone through how to import data before. So what I really want to show you is what you can do with CBSEM features in Smart PLS 4. Double click on that project. And now you can drag and drop, just like you would with a PLS model, a latent factor. And notice what happens. Let me zoom in here. You'll notice a few differences. First, each of the observed items or manifest items has an error or residual associated with it automatically. And there is a constraint on one parameter per latent factor. This is an assumption of covariance-based methods. Now, if for whatever reason you wanted to move that, you could just double click it and get rid of that constraint and instead put it somewhere else, like on this arrow. Double click that arrow, put the constraint here, or even put it on the latent factor, on its variance, like that. And then we get rid of the one here, just like you would in covariance based methods. Well, you can drag out multiple latent factors here, and it treats them the same. Let's do one more. And what we can do next is we can add correlations between these. Just drag and drag and drag. Because it is a covariance based model, we do want these covariance arrows between the latent factors. And then calculate, there are two options currently. Let me zoom in here. Here we go. You have the basic CBSEM algorithm and the bootstrapping. I'll start with the basic. It brings up some options. These should be familiar to you if you've used covariance-based methods before, and we can leave the rest as default. Go ahead and just hit start. It will run nice and fast. Zoom out. And we can see a few things. First, let me zoom in a bit. It's going to show you the unstandardized estimates. So if you'd like to fix that, make sure you go up here to outer model and change that to standardized. There we go, those are the standardized loadings you're accustomed to seeing. You can also see the correlations here between the latent factors. And you can see the residual variances right here. And over on the left, we can check out a few really cool things. First, if you go over to Outer Loadings and click on Standardized Matrix, then you'll see the pattern matrix that we're accustomed to seeing in an exploratory or confirmatory factor analysis. This shows you the standardized loading for each manifest variable on its latent factor. It will also display any cross loadings if they exist. In this case, they do not seem to exist. I'm not sure what the threshold is here, but I would assume it is anything above 0.3. Next, you can go down here to model fit. Ooh, this is exciting. I've always stayed away from model fit with PLS, but we're not in PLS right now. We're in covariance based methods. So you can look at the RMSEA and the SRMR, and the CFI, and anything else you want. And you now have model fit with your model using Smart PLS. This is really cool. You can also, of course, get construct reliability and validity measures, such as the Cronbax Alpha, the composite reliability, and the AVE, and look at discriminant validity. Here's something cool. You know we've always had Fornell Larker for covariance-based methods, but now we have HTMT for discriminant validity. And those are most of the things you'll see with the regular algorithm. I'm going to go back and show you what happens if we bootstrap. 
The default is 500. You can boost that up or down. It does take a while, so I'll leave it at 500 for this video. You can also choose between the most important metrics or a complete report. I'm going to choose the complete report for this video just to show you what you get. Go ahead and hit start. And here we go. As before, we can see visual loading is right here. The outer model is currently set to just unstandardized p-values. I'm going to go to outer weights and loadings standardized with p-values. Here we go, this one right here. Zoom in a bit. We can see that all of these loadings are indeed significant. And then on the left, we can again see the outer loadings standardized, but this time with their p-values. We can also see their confidence intervals, if that's important to you. Again, see the AVE, but this time with a p-value associated with the AVE. Same with composite reliability and with Cronbex Alpha. And here we go. We have the heterotrait monotrait with confidence interval. And we have the latent variable correlations, all with p-values. Notice when you do the bootstrapping, you do not get model fit metrics. So for those, run the regular PLS algorithm. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. I'll make a couple more videos on this. This was just an introduction.